Calisthenics and powerlifters are two of the strongest athletes in terms of body weight strength and free weight strength. But who is stronger? Today, we're going to be comparing the most elite athletes of these two categories. It's going to be Chris Heria versus Eddie Hall. But who is stronger? Now, obviously, body weight strength training and free weight strength training are different in terms of strength. However, they are both forms of resistance training and both can build muscle and strength through added repeated movements difficulty and of course progressive overload so in order to determine the winner we're going to have to set some standards here first is comparing both athletes in terms of relative and absolute strength relative strength is strength correlated with body weight while absolute strength is not secondly how good is the other athlete in the other training style how many pull-ups can eddie hall do how much weight can chris Heria deadlift these are the questions we're going to be answering. And thirdly, how difficult are the moves in calisthenics and powerlifting? Is benching 405 harder than doing full planche push-ups? Today, we're going to find this out. Number one, relative strength versus absolute strength. To repeat, relative strength is strength correlated with body weight, while absolute strength is not. For example, you could have two guys deadlifting. One guy is 100 pounds in body weight and deadlifting 200 pounds, where the other guy is 200 pounds and deadlifting 200 pounds. Now you might think that the guy who's 200 pounds and deadlifting more is stronger. Well, yes, in terms of absolute strength. However, in terms of relative strength, the guy who's actually deadlifting lighter is stronger because of the fact that he's lighter and lifting more percentage of his body weight. It's obvious that calisthenics athletes will have the edge in relative strength, while powerlifters will have the edge in well, absolute strength. This is because calisthenic athletes' moves are all body weight exercises, and they all have one thing in common. They use body weight as resistance. And therefore, the heavier you are, the harder it's going to be. Calisthenic athletes have to compensate for this. Because the moves require a lot of strength and they can't be heavy, well, they gotta be light and they gotta be strong, thus increasing relative strength. However, in powerlifting, the moves in powerlifting do not require body weight resistance. For example, if you're 200 pounds, the 200 pounds on your body will not be counted as resistance. However, absolute strength is not, well, everything. Being too heavy can actually take quite a toll on your body and finding a balance between a healthy body weight and good enough strength will lead to a healthier lifestyle. We'll get back to this in a second, but the next point we're going to discuss is how good are the athletes in the opposing training style? How much weight can Chris Harriet deadlift? How many pull-ups can Eddie Hall do? These are the questions that we are going to be asking. Because strength should be functional, strength should be able to be transferred from one type of training style to the other style of training styles. For example, if you can squat 315 for reps, your kicks in martial arts should be pretty powerful. So these are just some examples of the transfer of strength from one training style to the other training style. For calisthenics athlete, the transfer of strength over to free weight exercises is one of the most surprising yet remarkable things out there. Oftentimes, elite calisthenics athletes are able to lift insanely heavy weight, especially for their own body weight, and sometimes they can even outlift regular seasoned weightlifters. I think the reason that calisthenics athletes are good at this is because almost all the movements in calisthenics are compound movements. They require stability, core demands, and even more. Those exercises are extremely functional and therefore can be transferred extremely easily to another training style. I cannot say the same for power no, lifters. No! Power lifters will actually struggle with doing body weight exercises, especially the elite moves. Power lifters, although insanely strong, do not have the same transfer of strength over to calisthenics. Although this is common sense in the fitness community, many people don't know why. They don't know the actual reason. Many people believe that calisthenics is simply superior, but that isn't all the case. Because most power lifters are actually pretty heavy, especially if there's no weight categories. That makes it harder because calisthenics use body weight movements, which use body weight as resistance. Furthermore, calisthenics exercises use way more core activation, Whee! stability demands, and overall more muscle activation. Yes, compound movements do engage the core in a functional way. However, a lot of power lifters love to use external equipment. External equipment should be only used for safety measures. However, a lot of powerlifters nowadays depend on these external equipment. For example, lifting belts, wrist no, straps, no! these external equipments. For example, the lifting belts allow you to take your core out of the movement. 
This is great when you're trying to lift an insanely heavy PR. However, relying too much on the lifting belt can not only not develop your abs in a functional way, but increases the risk of injury when not using the belt because you're so reliant on it. This is the case for most powerlifters. That's why when they move over to body weight exercises, they don't have the help of that external equipment. A lifting belt won't help them do a front lever, which is why calisthenics athletes are able to do weightlifting very easily while powerlifters struggle to do calisthenics. Now, thirdly is exercise difficulty. No, this does not mean how effective the exercises are, for example, building muscle or building strength, but rather how difficult the exercises are in each category of training. We're gonna be looking at 405 bench versus full planche push-ups, power clean versus one arm pull-up. These are the questions we're going to be answering today. While both feats are simply impressive, both outmatch each other in a certain category. For example, powerlifters. The amount of load is going to be way more extreme. With bodyweight exercises, you can only lift so much with your body weight because your body weight, well, you can't increase your body weight in a single session. However, with powerlifting, you can just add on a plate with a barbell and lift more weights. That puts more pressure and more effort on your body, making the exercise more difficult. However, the dynamic movements, coordination, core demands, stability, and overall muscle activation in calisthenics athletes' moves are going to be much more difficult. And finally, who's stronger? We went over all the three steps in detail, and now we're going to review all three of them and determine the winner for each single point. Firstly, is relative strength versus absolute strength. Who's actually stronger? Well, this might surprise you, but the winner in this category is going to be the power lifter. Looking at raw strength, the power lifter easily destroys the calisthenics athlete. And because of the fact that power lifters actually oftentimes have weight categories, that means that they must develop both their absolute strength and also the relative strength because they must be in a certain weight group. Secondly, is the transfer of strength to the opposing training style. And I have to give this category to calisthenics. Yes, it was obvious when I stated this before, but simply note this, calisthenics is just more functional. Calisthenics is simply more functional because it engages everything, your nerves, your muscles, your joints. Every single part of your body is engaged in an elite calisthenics move. And because of powerlifting's over-reliance on external equipment, calisthenics takes the W in this category. And finally, we have the final point. What exercises are the most difficult? Are calisthenics moves like the full punch more difficult or a 405 bench more difficult? The amount of weight you lift isn't actually everything. In fact, you must be able to defy gravity and the human limitations that has been placed on you with moves and your strength. And despite powerlifting's insane feats, I have to give this category and the winner to calisthenics. Or powerlifting, what makes the movement hard isn't the movement itself, but actually the fact that you can add more and more weight. For example, doing a bench press. With a bench press, what makes the bench press hard isn't actually the movement itself, but a amount but the amount of weight you put on it. However, with calisthenics, not only can you add weight, but the movements are actually hard themselves. For example, doing a full planche with a weighted vest and without a weighted vest is just as hard as each one. In powerlifting, nothing but the movement is hard. It's about the load. In calisthenics, the movement is everything. The movement is the difficult part. And that's why with exercise difficulty, calisthenics takes the W. And this is why calisthenics is stronger than powerlifting. Because the actual movement is difficult, calisthenics beats powerlifting two to one. Now, a lot of you might be mad and I might get a lot of salt for this. So please watch my previous video of why calisthenics also destroys bodybuilding. Please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you do not subscribe, I'll blow